All right, so we're gonna tie in our wiring for our gauges here. Good morning, by the way. It is uh, 5.30-ish, Wednesday morning. Before I go to work, I figured I'd get some of this done. Um, we got our wide band wiring here. Our key hot fuse box is mounted here. I got a ground that I put in over here to the fender. So I, what I did is, for the lights, for the oil pressure and a boost gauge, I um, I ran those up through here, but I pulled the black wire through and came out the loom here. Put a little piece of heat shrink on the wire. So we're gonna put an eyelet here and put that on this stud. Um, and then tie in our hot. And then this one, I'm not sure, I think I just might put a little slit in this harness and try and pull that black wire through to do the same over here. Well, we got flasher. I gotta change the battery. So I'm gonna pause you and I'm gonna see if I can get that wire pulled back and then um, we'll take it from there. All right, so I took the wide van harness and I put a little tiny slit in it and I used a little piece of wire like this. And I fished around and I grabbed the black ground wire, and pulled it back through the harness to bring it out over here. Okay, so I got my, my boost and oil pressure light ground here. And I got the wide band ground here. We're gonna put these two together. Crimp them, solder them, then he shrink the eyelet. Okay, now I'm doing a similar thing up to the, both the powers as well. I usually use these, right? Actually, I usually don't use these covered um, terminals. The, I, I just don't like them. I just use the regular straight bare terminal. And then I pull, I put a heat shrink over them. So we are uh, gonna attempt that now. I got the solder iron warming up. Um, so we're gonna slip this on here and we're gonna, I got my heat shrink on already. That's the first thing you put on. Put that there, grab our crimpers. And we're gonna send it home. Spin that. Yeah. Maybe we want to use this one here. Okay, so do a tug. Okay, we're good there. Here's our eyelet. Let's try it on the stud. Make sure it fits, which it does. I got my heat shrink on here. Now, what you probably can't see, but these two wires, one's like a coated, silver coated wire, and then uh, the other one is just regular straight copper, and I'm putting them together, and whenever I do that, I don't think there would be a problem if I just straight crimped it, but... Just for safety state sake, um, after I crimp it, I'm gonna solder both of these connections just to ensure that I have a good connection between the both two different wire. So that's just me being over precautious, especially with connections and terminal crimping and everything. That is the worst. Thing to diagnose is a bad bad connection somewhere it's like you shake a harness and and it'll do what it's doing and then you have to find it and it's just a nightmare so I try and be as adequate as, as I possibly can with the soldering and, and all that just to ensure I have good connections everywhere so some big solder here. I don't really, this is really large stuff. I don't really like the big stuff like this, but I got kind of no choice because 
I don't have anything. I uh, can't find any other stuff somewhere floating around this shithole. Alright, so put a little solder on, on, on the iron to get transferred to heat. And I usually like to put the heat at the furthest point away from the solder because the solder will go to the heat. You know what I'm saying? It'll travel. It wants to travel to the heat. So, so this here. Touch a solder on the iron to transfer the heat to the terminal. Come on. Come on. Here we go. It's traveling to the heat. Yeah, I mean, you know, the detail is just insane on this one. We try to make it as accurate as possible. Wow. Here we go. Very cool. She's all set. Now, we'll go back to this one, seeing it's cooled a little bit. We take our heat shrink, throw it up to it, kind of muscle it over. This heat shrink has got glue in it to seal it. If Daniel and his team had trouble with this windshield, I know we're going to have trouble. But right now, I have to focus on getting this land speeder body ready to go. That's why I'm so, out here. So, there we go. <laughs> and this one. There we go. And that's how that goes. And we get a heat gun, we'll shrink these down. <laughs> right here. It's cold out here. We're supposed to get snow tomorrow night. I can't believe it. Snow already. Thank God the rain let let up a little bit. I can go out into the back and get the plow out and ready to go for tomorrow. Goddamn nightmare. So yeah. So anyway, so here's our powers. So side out of here these covers pop off like this a little button so we got key hot that gonna go on there. give me yeah, these little guys there we go that's on here's our data for data lines for the gauge I haven't quite figured out what I'm gonna do with that. That's that, and here we go. Okay. So here's our ground wire on. There. There's our uh, 
round is on. Now I gotta get a fuse for here. So, give me one minute, I'm gonna pause ya. Okay. So I got a bag of fuses here. They were saying they wanted five amp draw. So I think, I have both gauges, but the light, the light, lights for the boost gauge are minuscule, so five amps should be plenty. Um, so we'll put our fuse in, pop our cover back on here, let me grab you. Okay, we're probably going to get an error message on the AFR gauge on the wide band because I don't have the what the I don't have the um O2 sensor plugged in but oh, and there we go yeah it says sensor but oil pressure boost and wide band my high beams are on and the blinkers on that's annoying but yeah, here we go. Gauges are wired in. Yeah. Just for ha ha's, I'm gonna plug in that sensor. So give me one minute. I got the sensor plugged in. It should go into a heat cycle. Heat. She's warming up. And come on, it's cold in here. It's probably only about 35 40 degrees. Okay, we got dead lean, is what it's supposed to be. Dead lean because the car ain't running. So, anyway, here we go. Okay, so we're good there. We got uh, gauges are wired in. Um, let me see if I can find one more thing to do before I go to work. Uh, I'll pause you guys for a moment. Okay, what I'm going to show you here is how to properly put one of these compression fitting style um, oil pressure gauge fittings together um, I want to show you there's three pieces to it there's this piece that goes into your eighth if you have an eighth inch um, port coming out of your engine which majority of the time you do or sometimes you might have to get an adapter for this, but this comes with your gauge. This is not the one that came with the gauge. This is one that I had. There, if the one that came with the gauge, if you put these and put them on a scale, this is way heavier. I don't know why. It's like they use cheaper brass or something. But this is this is an, not, I wouldn't say antique, but um, I wouldn't say antique, but it's from the 70s. I promise you, it's heavy. So anyway. We're gonna need that in one second. There's that piece, then there's a little tiny ferrule, which I don't know if you can see that. It's tiny. And then there's the nut. So I am going to bring all three of them over to the camera so you can see them close up. Okay. This is the nut. It's tiny. Okay. This is the ferrule, which is tiny. Okay. And here is the p part that goes into the block. Focus, you fuck. See if I can go like this. There we go. Okay. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to take your nut, the very first one I showed you, and your, what, what a lot of problem is a lot of people, they'll take this, they'll put it in. They'll put it in the engine block. And then they'll do what I'm about to show you. And nine times out of ten, if you do it that way, 
You're gonna break this knot. Guaranteed. So, what you do, is take your knot, put your nut on your line, take your ferrule, put your ferrule, I don't know if you can see it, put your nut on, put your ferrule on, next, okay? And you take, take your uh, fitting, push your line into your fitting. Okay, so you, so it's all the way bottomed out. And you take your nut, put it on, and you you kind of keep pressure on this, pushing it this way with this. You'll feel the line move. Now you know you're, you're bottomed out, okay? At this point, you're gonna take your 3 8 wrench, put it in your palm, like this, okay? And you are just gonna, you don't have to go much. You're just gonna go one, and two. About a total of a half a turn is all you need to go. And that's tight, okay? Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it apart. All right, you pull that off and then you inspect the end and you will see a little tiny crimp where it crimped to the plastic line. All right, let me get the camera so I can show you that crimp. Let me zoom out. There. Get over here. Shove in my pocket so I don't lose it. Look at this line. I'm gonna try. You see how the very tip of that right there? It's crimped. That's it. You don't need to go five, you know, six, seven, eight turns. The problem is, is when you put the fitting in a block, you can't feel how tight you're actually tightening that. And that's why you break the nut. Because you can't feel it. When you have it in both your hands, you can feel it. So now we are going to finish installing it. All right, so I'm gonna put you back on the tripod. Right there. I'm gonna zoom your way in. There. I'm gonna well, come out a little bit. There. So here's our oil feed line from down there. I use the braid line because it's heat, a lot of hot down there. So this can withstand and take that heat. This will melt instantly. So now, take that. Wait a minute. We don't take that. We have an adapter because this line is like a brake line. So you had, I had to get an adapter for the, um, to go from brake line. I don't know why they sent this oil feed line to me. It's not, it's not an oil feed line at all. That's what it was advertised as, but it's actually like a brake line. It's got a ball and socket fit. So now that's eighth inch to eighth inch. So we're gonna use eighth inch to eighth inch pipe. Um, get rid of this old one. See, this is the one I got with the gauge. And if you put, oh, it's gone now, went down the fender. If you feel the weight difference is amazing. Okay, so let's grab our pipe tape. Make sure we're gonna put it on correctly. So this would go to the bottom. Okay, there. Threads on here. Okay. Let's uh, give me. Ooh. Okay, so. That's right there. I know it's 12 mil. 12 millimeter right here. Quick, tied the Yankees heaters out. Hopefully, this thing didn't drop too far, and I can still make this thing work. Okay. 22 inches to there. So, that's pretty much where the windshield goes, and then it turns back. So, all this crap in the middle gets lopped off. Okay. There's that. So, I'm pretty impressed that this actually works. 
Give us our next piece here. Put a little thread tape on that. There is a proper way to put this tape on. <laughs> I thought I lost that one now on the fender. <laughs> there is a proper way of putting this tape on. If you put it on one way, it'll it'll undo the tape. But yeah, you wanna. Jesus, that's a slippery sucker. Okay. You want to put it on the direction that, if the opposite direction that is threading in, or otherwise it'll just take the tape off when you're putting it in. Which I did that. So basically, the tape comes over this way, and I'm threading it in now, the opposite direction. So, I'm like this. Like this. Okay. Now. And I can hold out for more money, but I'd rather sell Now that's on there. Okay. There's that, there's that, there's that. Now Keep this in our hand, where did our 3 8 go in my pocket? Take our, our line here, now it's going to go right in. Now we know how we already went a half a turn on that, so we know we don't have to go another 2 or 3 turns, you just, it's tight. So we're going to go right there and then two quarter turns equals a half so that's one complete turn since zero now that's just gonna go down there like this and now there we go our oil pressure line is all hooked up thanks for watching